All right, today I'm going to show you how to make a APA style graph in Excel. You can do this on a PC or on a MacBook. I am currently using a MacBook, so things are gonna be a little bit different, but I will tell you the differences as I spot them. So for starters, let's open up Excel and get started. All right, so as you can see here, I've already pre-entered some data. You always want to enter your data all in a straight line. Common misconception is you have to stagger your data, but you do not. So you want to enter in your sessions, as many sessions as you need. Obviously you can add these in as you make changes. Label it just so you keep track and then enter in your data. So here I have my data for aggression. I started out really high and then this is my baseline. And this is the start of my intervention. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight my entire data section and I'm gonna go up here to insert. Now, a lot of times you're gonna think you need to insert a line graph. Don't insert line, go to scatter plot. Sounds weird, but it goes so much more smoothly. So insert a scatter plot and you're gonna go over to the fourth one on a PC it's a little bit different but regardless you want a scatter plot with straight lines and markers so click that and you have your graph let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it zoom in a little bit all right so here I am I've got my graph now for APA style formatting number one thing is everything needs to be black so I like to call this the make it pretty stage. You are going to change everything from the light gray that it is that is default to black. So that's what I'm gonna focus on doing now. And as I do that, I will talk you through what I am doing. So first things first, I'm going to make aggression up here. I'm gonna highlight it. You notice my little box pops up to the left. You're gonna to go to text options cause that's what I'm changing. And as you can see, it's kind of like a gray color. So I'm gonna change it to black aggression we can title this effects of dra on aggression great or positive reinforcement or whatever it is that you want to focus on okay so i always like to click outside of the graph i think it makes it easier and then re-click in i'm gonna double click my x-axis down here remember x and then y as always, be in text options. Again, this is gray or something, so I'm going to make it black. Sometimes that isn't enough. As you can see, this line right here has not become darker. So I'm gonna make sure my data is highlighted. I'm gonna go to access options. I'm gonna go to this paint bucket up here and online, I'm gonna do a solid line. It says it's black, I'm gonna double check, click out. There it is. Now it's black. It's pretty. You can see it. Glorious. All right. I'm going to do the same thing over here to my y-axis. Paint bucket. Solid line. Make sure it's black. Go to text options. Make them black. All right. So now here we can do the same thing. We're just going to get it all included. Here are our data points. Make sure all of them are selected. Go to your paint bucket. Right now it says my color is blue. Change it to black. I'm gonna click, that's the line. I'm gonna go over here to marker. I want it to be a solid fill and I need it to be black. The border is this weird line around it. And as you can see, if you do not change it, my border is blue and it looks funny. Make sure you change it, it's important. Go back to marker, make it a solid line. This defaulted to black, awesome. Now we are all black all the way across. All right, next thing is you need to have access titles. Access, access titles. So you're gonna click on your graph in the entirety. You're gonna go up here to chart design, which it has highlighted, add chart element, and add a primary horizontal and primary vertical axis on a PC you will actually get a little nice plus button right here. It's basically gonna look like this plus, but it'll be beside your graph. 
and it'll come up with this very option and you just check them off. It's glorious. So here we are. We're going to say frequency of aggression. As you can see that this is not black. It's like a dark gray. Strange. If your box over here does not clump up, just right click your words and go down to format access title and that will bring up this right here. Okay, again, text options, change it from gray to black. Now I have frequency of aggression in a nice black tone. Same thing down here. So basically this is just sessions. Gonna highlight, change it. Now it is black. All right, that is the beginning of that. So. Now what we need to do is get rid of our grid lines. Grid lines are a no-go. You do not want grid lines. So what you're going to do is click outside your graph. For a PC user, you'll click on your plus line and just click the grid lines, get rid of it. For a Mac, you got to go over. I'm going to go to grid lines. I'm going to unclick. Grid lines, unclick. So now I do not have grid lines anymore. It's phenomenal, super great. All right, going back to our axis again. So on our x-axis here, you may notice that our tick marks are missing. So I am clicked on, I'm gonna click on axis options and down here you see the tick marks. So we're gonna do major type and they should be inside the graph. Actually, I think they might need to be outside of the graph. Oh, Lanta. Yeah, inside the graph. Perfect. You are going to rewrite your bounds as zero. This makes the numbers fixed. Okay, so zero for your minimum, 16, is not actually our maximum, it's 15 currently. So we're gonna change that. Our major unit is what's right here. So it's this is what's being switched around. We're actually gonna change this to one, just so you can see every single session. Notice our tick marks line up with our data points. It's great. Now that you've redone this, you're set to go for a later step. So go over here and again, click on your Y axis. You need to go to your paint bucket, scroll down. Am I in text access options? All right, so now for your access, you actually don't need to go to the paint bucket. You'll go over here to the bars. Here are your access options. You need to do the same thing. So make sure you fill those in. This fixes the numbers to ensure when we insert our phase change lines later that none of our data moves on us. Our max is 60. Major can be 10, that's fine. Adjusted according to what, what you have here. So if I had, we can actually make it five. It'll just give us a little bit clearer. It's a little crowded, but it's not too bad. If you were doing a percentage, you'd wanna go by 10. Just whatever you think makes your graph look the best. Again, major type inside. You now have all of your tick marks on the inside and they are pointing at your graph. Okay. So I'm going to click outside. So now you might be wondering why our data is connected from baseline to intervention. And that is because we put all of our data in one single line. There's a fun way to get rid of this. So look at where your intervention starts, which for me, it is face or it is session six, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, end of baseline session six is where intervention starts. So I'm gonna click on just the intervention point. As you click on it, you might've noticed all of my points got highlighted. I'll do that again so you can see. I'm gonna click on it. All of my points are highlighted, but I only want session six. So I'm gonna click on it again. So as you can see, just session six is clicked on. I'm gonna go to my paint bucket here and I'm gonna go up to no line. There you go. It has now removed the line from my baseline to intervention and it separated my data points. So now I have a gap in my data. All right, 
Now we are going to add in our face change line. Before I figured out how to do this, I was always drawing in a line. Super frustrating, very time consuming, but now we found a fun new way to do it. So what you're gonna do is you are going to go right here to column D and you are gonna enter the X axis point that is between five and six. So it's literally gonna be 5.5. .5. And you'll go to column E and you are going to enter the maximum number of your Y axis. So for this example, my max is 60. For a percentage example where I go up to 100, my max would be 100. But you always enter in the D column, your X axis session, say if this was another portion of intervention, I would make this at 11 and a half because it's between 11 and 12. All right, so here it is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click the entirety of my graph and I'm going to right click it. I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to click select data. I will get this funny little doodad come up. And then what I want to do is I want to add in, ooh, gotta figure out, nope, not what I want to do, I need to add. So I'm guessing my series two right here is going to be my new thing. So what I'm gonna do is, well, all right. A lot of things just happened there, so let me redo that. All right, so I'm gonna cancel that now that I figured it out and show you again. All right, so I'm going to click on my graph so the entirety of it is highlighted. I'm going to right click, select data. Now, for to add on a MacBook, you are gonna hit this arrow and it's gonna add series two. On a PC, when you need to add in something, it will be, you will right click, you'll select add, or you'll select select data. And then what you will do is, let me get to it. You're going to, there's literally a button that just says add and you're gonna add it. So now that I'm on series two, I'm gonna go over here to my X axis value. I'm gonna click that little arrow and I'm gonna highlight the entirety of what's in my x-axis. I'm gonna then click my arrow again. I'm gonna come over to my y. I'm gonna highlight my entire y-axis. I'm gonna go down and I'm going to, okay. So now you've got this fun little point. It'll be the same thing for a PC. You are gonna go in, you're going to hit add. You will highlight your data for each line. It'll be great. You click your arrows, you highlight your data. Click your arrow, Y series, highlight your data, and then click OK and OK to add it in. So now I've got this fun little point and I am going to make a face change line out of it. So what you do next is, you're, I always like to click out, then we're gonna click in. We're gonna go up here to chart design for those of you on a PC, you'll just hit the arrow or the plus sign next to your graph, and you are gonna go to error bars and more error bar options. So I am going to click this series two. Okay. So now you, as you can see, I have an error bar. So I'm gonna go over to my bars. I'm gonna click no cap because I don't want it to have a cap. And this is a vertical error bar. My fixed value is going to be the maximum of the Y axis. So for this example, it is 60. And there you can see, I now have a straight line all the way down. I'm going to go up here to this, to this uh, horizontal and I'm just going to hit delete so it's no longer anything I need to worry about. So now I'm gonna go back to my error bar. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go to this. Make sure you click on this point too so it includes it. I'm gonna go to the marker because we don't need a marker. Make sure you click no line, no fill. As you can see now when I click out, 
I no longer have a marker. So click your error bar again, go to your paint bucket. Now you want to make sure it is black and you want to dash it. I always like to pick the dashes that are big just to make sure you can see it. And now you have a beautiful face change line where that will move along with your graph as you add in more data. So if I put a ton more data in right here, it would also add in. All right, so now final little notes that you need to do is you always want to label your graph. So I'm going to click my graph so the entire thing is clicked. I'm going to go to insert, I'm gonna go to shapes, I'm gonna add a text box and I'm gonna go right over my area and I'm gonna type in baseline. You can make this smaller if you think it is too big. I'm a good believer in 10. Click outside of it. See, now it's line it up so it's, you know, looks good. I'm gonna click back in. You always need to click outside and then re-click your graph because that will ensure that the text box is being stuck to the graph, not to anything else. Right here, I'm gonna write intervention. Gonna make sure it's highlighted. I'm gonna change it to 10. I'm going to move this around so it's pretty even. I'm gonna click outside. All right, I'm gonna click this again. I'm gonna insert. We're gonna add another text box down in this bottom corner because you always want to, in the bottom right hand corner, you need to add the name of your student. Make it just the size. You don't wanna make it too big, too obnoxious. And for this one, you actually do want a borderline. So add in your solid borderline. Okay, so now as you can see all of that, but if you can't tell, you can also see this, these lines right here around my graph. You do not want those. So unclick your graph, re-click it, and just go over here, paint bucket, chart options, no line. To make sure that that's gone away, just click outside your graph. And there you have it, an APA formatted graph that is has all the points of and the APA format. There you go.